Good afternoon, church family. I greet you in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you again for joining me for this week's manna, which we will focus yet again on this book, The Mothers and Daughters of the Bible Speak. And what I wanted to do is move into uh, now uh, the context and the focus of uh, Jacobed and Miriam. Uh, let me begin with a word of prayer and then we will get uh, right to it. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, O oh God, opening up your word is such a gift. It's a blessing, O oh God. We are learning about mothers. We are learning about daughters. We are learning about your word. And that is so key uh, in this world, O oh God, that tells us uh, their own truth, but we seek, Lord, biblical truth as believers. We seek, Lord, the path that leads uh, to eternal life, and that is certainly found in and through your word. So, Lord, we lift your name on high, Lord, and we want to honor you through your word. So bless this study, and we ask this always in Jesus' holy name. Amen. So, church, what I wanted to do is uh, read both from uh, the scriptures and the book of Exodus. I'm going to start uh, in the very beginning, the first chapter, highlight a few verses, and then I'll go back and forth between uh, the book and, and the Word of God. So, let, uh, let me begin first chapter here, uh, verse 7 in the book of Exodus. So that's Exodus chapter 1, verse 7, just to kind of give us, give us a highlight here. But the children of Israel were fruitful and increased abundantly, multiplied and grew exceedingly mighty, and the land was filled with them. So they were safe, they were secure, they were well fed. Um, Jacob had, uh, had set that up all is going uh, well for uh, the people of God. Now, here's what happens very quickly uh, in verse 8. Pay close attention to this. Now, as we move forward in time, there arose a new king over Egypt, one who did not know Joseph. So this, this new king, this new authority, uh, did not know Joseph, and, and things began uh, to be uh, quite chaotic, quite troubled uh, for the Israelite people. So I, I, I want to begin uh, there uh, by saying this uh, in, uh, in the book, and, and, and I quote here. It says, The integrity and humility of Joseph which had saved the Egyptian people, now was nothing but a distant memory. And the reality for Jacobed and Miriam was one of brutal slavery and zero freedom. So we go throughout the book of Exodus then, um, God calling uh, the leader Moses to then take the people then out of Egypt to free them of uh, their oppression, of their slavery, of their uh, mistreatment. So that's that's where uh, we begin this uh, the, the, this afternoon's study. Let me uh, let let me also uh, offer just a, a couple of other things here from from the book that I thought uh, was a standout. Uh, I go to page 18, uh, on page 18, let, let me kind of offer this large paragraph in quotes here. It says this, Jacobed, having acted in obedience and faith, then had the blessing of raising her own son, rather than mourning his death. Per the custom of the time, it's likely she nursed and nurtured him for at least two to three years. Think of the wisdom and knowledge she poured into this young child, firmly rooting him in the ways and traditions and beliefs of the Hebrew people. All along, God was scripting, here it is, Moses' story, equipping and preparing him to be uniquely qualified and positioned to save the entire nation of Israel. 
Jacobed's life is a perfect example of the impact and eternal importance of motherhood. The spiritual foundation she laid during her son's formative years would make all the difference decades later, right? When Moses struggled with and ultimately followed God's calling on his life. Jacobed also raised Miriam, this is an important detail, who became a prophetess and later among her people, and Aaron, who was the founder of Israel's priesthood. Their home must have been filled with deep reverence and commitment to the God of their fathers. Together, this trio of siblings would lead their people to freedom under God's direction and protection. So you see, yes, God did call Moses to do wonderful things. He certainly doubted himself. He didn't feel like he was suitable for the role of leader, of uh, certainly a, a challenger against Pharaoh. But there were other very key players here, right? Jacobed. Uh, and Miriam. It's all kind of laying this foundation. So, I, I, I mean, I ask you in this way, you know, if you, if you believe uh, that God is laying a foundation for your own life, okay, uh, much like in the uh, book of Exodus here and how the narrative goes along, there is this foundation, but uh, in the ways of life and the topsy-turviness of life, that doesn't necessarily mean that that foundation is not going to be rocked, right? But can you see God uh, in those moments when the foundation is in fact rocky or the foundation cracks? Let me ask you that question. Can you see God in the midst of that? Or are you just very quickly throwing in the towel, running away, giving up, accepting defeat? Let me put that on your spirit uh, to consider and to, and, and, and to, put, to put to prayer uh, here as well. Moving on to uh, another segment of, uh, of this book. Th this is what struck me uh, in, um, or rather on page 25 here, a and I quote here. It says, the Lord God Almighty was not messing around. That special child Jacobed held in her arms 80 years earlier was about to fulfill his destiny, whether he felt ready or not. God gave Moses specific directions about exactly what to say and to whom. He told him to assemble the elders of Israel and to let them know God had been watching over them all during their own misery and that good things were coming. The Lord assured Moses the elders would listen, but that's not the only speaking assignment he had. Moses was directed to go uh, directly to Egypt's king and demand the Israelites be allowed to leave. Even after God showed him the incredible signs and wonders, Moses would be able to perform in order to convince any doubters. Moses remained a doubter himself. So let me ask you, when things aren't going your way, when things aren't going the way that you think God has kind of uh, in a sense, ordered your own life, are you quick to doubt, okay? Are, are, you, are you quick to turn that doubt into something more, uh, into faith, into assurance? Let me let you think about that for a minute, okay? Put uh, that to prayer. I, I, our lives very much are are spoken of and and are are, are laid out here through these uh, heroic figures and in, in God's word. Take take the time to read uh, the first uh, four or five chapters of of the book of Exodus. For instance, the the miraculous signs that are spoken of. Go to Exodus four as an example. Okay, it it, it outlines. Uh, that uh, right there, and, and and let me let me just highlight 
here for a moment, some of these miraculous signs. Again, I, I, I want us to to see that the foundation has been laid. It doesn't mean that it's not going to get cracked. It's not going to be um, rocked at times. But I want you to be finding God in the midst of when your world uh, shakes or quakes, okay? Here it is. He, here's God's way of saying, Moses, I'm here. Verse, or excuse me, chapter 4, verse 1. Then Moses answered and said, But suppose they will not believe me or listen to my voice. Suppose they say, The Lord has not appeared to you. So the Lord said to him, What is that in your hand? He said, A rod. And he said, cast it on the ground. So we cast it on the ground, and it became a serpent, Scripture says. And Moses, what? When we see snakes, many of us are not snake lovers. So what do we do? We flee from it, right? We, we don't want to get snake bit. Verse 4, then the Lord said to Moses, reach out your hand and take it by the tail. And he reached out his hand, and he caught it, and it became a rod, Scripture says, in his hand that they may, here it is, that they may believe that the Lord God of their fathers, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, the God of Jacob, has appeared to you. And then it goes further. I, I love these miraculous signs. How about this one? Furthermore, the Lord said to him, now put your hand in your bosom. And he put his hand in his bosom. And when he took it out, behold, his hand was leprous like snow. Let me continue, verse 7. And he said, put your hand in your bosom again, and bam, guess what? So he put his hand in his bosom again and drew it out, and what happened? His hand was restored like his other flesh. Miraculous signs, church. God is present. God is willing. God is able. Are, are, are we trusting in that? Are, are we are we when our foundation is shook, when the ground is quaking, are we leaning on the promises of God or are we only leaning on our own understanding, our own logic, our own know-how? It continues there. Um, but wow, what, what, what a fascinating text. And I want you to be able to apply this very narrative of Moses into our own lives because it, it, it is very applicable. Uh, there's something that I want to read from the 15th chapter in the book of Exodus, and that has this has to do uh, with Miriam, and it is the song of Miriam. This comes from chapter 15, beginning with verse 20. It says this, then Miriam, the prophetess, here it is, the sister of Aaron, okay, took the timbrel in her hand, and all the women went out after her with timbrels and with dances. And Miriam answered them with this song, Sing to the Lord, for he has triumphed gloriously. The horse and its rider, he has been thrown into the sea. So let me ask you something, church. When the ground quakes, when your knees begin to shake, are you, are you lifting up the name of Jesus? Are you, as the scripture says, lifting these words up? Lord God, you were going to triumph gloriously. God did it for Moses. Why wouldn't God do it for you too? Think about that. This is biblical truth that's offered to us here. Not some falsity in the ways of the world, but biblical truth. He triumphed gloriously. There you go, with God's help. Let me uh, offer one other thing here that struck me uh, about this uh, text and, and it and it's really just kind of summarizing here uh, what um, 
what this chapter is is about. And, and look, this whole chapter, this whole book is absolutely wonderful. And if I had time and if I had the rights to do so, I'd read every word. But we don't have time to do that, okay? So I just want to give you little tidbits in quotes, okay? So so let me let me just offer this. Page 27. Shannon says this, and I, and, and I quote here. She says, again and again, we see that God highlights women and their roles in bringing about his bigger plans. Jacobed models faith for us. There's a model of faith right there. There is a witness here in Jacobed. She was a woman so in tune, listen to this, so in tune with God that she was able to see an extraordinary vision for her son. How about that? She's a model, you see. God's using this woman. That trust in God gave her the holy courage to defy an evil king's murderous order. She used what she had, there it is, and released her precious baby to God's plan. I'm going to come back to that in just a moment. It can be tough for us to surrender our loved ones to God. And Jacobed did it more than once. Wow. So let me go back here because this struck me. It says here, she used what she had and released her precious baby to God's plan. Church, let me ask you this question. Are you using reverently, diligently, faithfully, in a good stewarding way, the resources, the gifts that God gives to you? Are you doing that? Are you doing that? And then let me follow up with this last question. Are you giving the rest to God Almighty? where it belongs. Or are we, like in our own imperfect, uh, often selfish human nature, holding on to it or hoarding it? Think about that. Using what you've been given and giving the rest to God. Think about that. Pray about that. That is an excellent, excellent word for us this day. Church, let's, uh, let's do this. Uh, the uh, Next week's study, we're going to be looking at the book of Ruth, okay? The book of Ruth. So, if you would, go ahead and begin reading the entire book of Ruth, and we will pick up there with Naomi, the mother, and Ruth, okay? We will pick up there the next time we meet. So until then, let me offer a word of prayer for us and pray the scripture into it. Let's go to the Lord. Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, O oh God, our Lord is the bread from heaven, the very bread that we need that will nourish our hungry soul. Lord, guide us, direct us, Forgive us, Lord. Show us your mercy, Lord. I pray in the name of Jesus that we are very faithfully and in a um, aware steward's way using the resources that you have given us and surrendering unto you the rest. Jacobed did. She's a model for us. She's a witness, and we need a witness in our life now more than ever. Lord, she fulfilled your plan. And thanks be to God. May we do the same. In Jesus we pray. Amen. Church, you have a wonderful and blessed day, and I will look forward to seeing you next week. Take care and God bless.